Kohar only needs to finish the first round in order to wrap up the championship. And Taven, that's a great position to be sitting in. Yeah, especially Malene wrapping up the championship last weekend, Creighton wrapping it up last night. That is a huge way to get off the shoulders and kind of just carry on with fun. I mean, granted, there is tonight and tomorrow still racing, but with Emo only happened to just start the race today, I mean, I would think that would be a great position to be sitting in. Absolutely. And uh, going back to Malene and Creighton, a great champion mindset. They didn't even need to win last night, and they made statement wins. So uh, I'm sure we'll see the same fire and spirit from Emo. But before we kick things off, I've got Ethan Day here with me with FCA for a word of prayer. Before we get started, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are an amazing creator. Uh, the landscapes that we have here in Duluth are absolutely beautiful, and there's no better location than to finish out this championship right here. And so just thank you for the opportunity to be at this awesome location. But before we get started, Lord, first and foremost, let's just lift up our troops to you right now. Um, they're the real heroes tonight, and they fight for the freedoms that we have to be able to uh, to enjoy our racing and the freedoms that we have to pursue our passions. So just want to take the time to not take them for granted um, because they fight so hard. Lord, <coughs> last night and during the day today, we had so many good, phenomenal races. And Lord, I just pray that each one of these racers can perform to the best of their abilities uh, to earn their respectable positions in each one of their classes. And uh, to see their hard work throughout the whole season, it's, it's really paid off for, some, for a lot of them. So um, we just ask for your hand of protection over them. And that overall, Lord, uh, really first and foremost, that we just want to recognize that, Jesus, you have won these battles, and even through something as silly as racing snowmobiles, that Jesus, you have won these battles for us already. So Lord, we just lift you up as before we start racing, and in your name, Jesus, let's go racing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ethan. And I now have the pleasure of introducing my mother of singing the national anthem, Kim Woody. Thanks, Dave. Um, to anybody in the fan or the fans in the crowd and at home, thank you for your support and your love for all of our Snowcross families. Without you, we'd be nothing. So it is an honor and a privilege to thank each and every person that has ever put on a uniform for my freedom. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red and glare the bombs burst in, in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that start spangled banner and wave o'er the land of the free? And the hope of the brave. Beautiful as always, Kim. Thank you so much. And now I'm honored to be joined by Major Andy Bukite. Andy, can you tell the fans a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I'm currently serving as an Air Force ROTC instructor at University of Minnesota Duluth. So we train future second lieutenants um, while they go through college. So. It's a great opportunity for them to be able to have a normal college experience, but then have be commissioned in the Air Force after graduation, so have a job immediately. And why did you join, Major? Well, um, the Air Force has jets. <laughs> so um, I grew up in a military family. Uh, my dad's in the Army, so I kind of, this is sort of normal for me. Um, it's kind of a natural switch to, uh, to do it. But again, the Air Force has jets, so that's why I went the direction I did. Hey, great reason there, <laughs> but Major, we're going to be doing a ceremony here tonight, so I'm going to let you take the floor. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Please raise your right hand. I. State your name. 
do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to the regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your applause and congratulations to the newest recruits to the United States Air Force. And we ask that you always keep all the members of our military, both here and abroad, in your thoughts and your prayers. And now, it's time to meet your top five in the Amswell Pro Points coming into the next to last round of 2024. We start with the racer in the number five spot at points, hailing from Medford, Wisconsin, riding a Polaris for Team Lavalli. He's sponsored by Team Lavalli, Polaris, Red Bull, Walker Evans Racing, FXR Racing, along with Woody's Traction, Polaris Lubricants, Kafka Conveyors, Kopka Granite, he's looking for a win in this Amsoil Pro class, and he has been fast the past few rounds. We're in the number three. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Adam Peterson. Adam, coming off not the most ideal night of racing, but tell me, what, can you, what did you learn during those rounds that you can apply here tonight for a better result? Yeah, uh, last night was actually a pretty decent night. Uh, was really consistent with 3-5-3. Thought I had that podium, but we were just short, so just need that little bit of extra for tonight. Looking forward to seeing you out there. Just 19 points ahead of him in the fourth spot in points is this veteran campaigner that hails for Grand Blanc, Michigan. Looking for a little better luck than he had one round ago. He's riding an Arctic Cat for Kylo Racing. Sponsored by Arctic Cat, Fly Racing, Advanced Grain Handling Systems, Country Cat, and Stein on the number 727, Jacob Yerk. Jake, a hot and cold night of racing for you in our previous round. What do you need to do and work on to turn the ship back around? Uh, you know, we learned a lot with suspension yesterday. You haven't done a lot of ski hill stuff. Uh, and, and just a lot of things out of our control last night. So, you know, new day today, clean slate, forget about it, and, uh, you know, move forward, try to get some good starts and run up front. Best of luck out there. Sitting third in the points is a multi-time Amsoil Pro Triple Crown winner and our most recent overall winner 24 hours ago. He hails from Chicoutimi, Quebec, Canada, riding a Skidoo for Warnet Racing. He's sponsored by Makita, Skidoo, FVP Parts, NTM, GMC, and XPS. It comes into tonight 16 points ahead of Jacob Yurick. He's third right now. Welcome to 5'11 of Jordan LaBelle. Jordan, coming off yet another overall win. Do performances like that give you even more confidence going into our remaining two rounds? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. It gives you more confidence uh, knowing that you can be out there in the front. And, uh, yeah, just looking for that consistency again, uh, keep, keeping it in the top three uh, in all three triple crowns. Looking forward to seeing you back out there tonight. Best of luck. Our runner-up in the Amsoil Pro points pulled off the podium. Last round here at Spirit Mountain. He hails from saint Felicien, Quebec, riding a skidoo for Theme Motorsports, and he comes on only four points ahead of Jordan LaBelle. Sponsored by Skidoo, FXR, North American Trailer, Aluminum Cabinet Company, and Classic Construction on the 220, Francis Peltier. Francis, last night you told me the key to getting back on the podium was simply have fun. And I'd say you did just that with a second overall. So is it the same key to success here tonight? Oh yeah, for sure. We have to have fun and improve every time we go out. Definitely showed in your riding. So best of luck to you out there tonight. 
Our Amsoil Pro point leader has been there since about the one third mark of the season. He could clinch the Pro Championship tonight. He hails from Bjurzjan, Sweden, riding a Polaris for Judnik Motorsports. Sponsored by Polaris, Climb, Wild River Jerky, Core RV, SSI decals, and Cutzler Express. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Moose aboard the 31 Emil Har. Emil with an 11th place qualifying position. You have your work cut out for you on the start in round one. So what's the strategy to ensure a good jump despite being in the back row? Uh, yeah, I think this is the first time this year I'm in the back row in the start. And uh, yeah, it's going to be challenging, but I will uh, do my best and try to do as many passes as possible. And uh, hopefully we can end up doing good in this one. Well, if any rider can work their way through the pack, it's you, so best of luck out there. Robbie, dare I say we've saved one of the best for last when it comes to the track that we have here at Spirit Mountain in Duluth. Yeah, and that's what happens when you have all this fresh white snow. We're going to go for a little lap with my man Jordan. All right, we're going to go up the hill into this first corner, and this is the Air Force drop right here. You can see how gnarly this section can get. And Pay attention to this during the night. It's going to change, and riders are going to have to find new lines. Over the finish line into another left. And then this section here, we saw passes all night long last night through here, inside, outside. Tonight, they changed it up a little bit. There's not two lines. It's one big bull turn. So all that middle ridge is going to be gone into this corner. And we saw Har had a lot of trouble in here. This is where that first round last night kind of changed his night around. Back down again, and then the drag race. You're going to go six seconds wide open all the way up this hill, and that will do it here in Duluth. It is a massive track, tons of elevation change, and we are ready to get rolling. Getting ready for the start of two rounds of pro like qualifying. This first round here, you get one point for a win, two for a second, three for a third in each of the heat races. At the end of the two rounds, tally up the points, lowest 10 scores, lock into the front row of the final. Next 10 go to an LCQ, and that will take the top five finishers to the back row of the final. And here's a rundown of racers, including our Newly crowned 2024 Pro Light champion, Creighton Dillon for Dean Motorsports. That's right, he's gonna line up right in the middle. And to his right is gonna be Eric Downs. He's got some tough customers in this one, no doubt, but now the pressure's off. Creighton has no pressure, he can ride free, and I think that's exactly what you're gonna see tonight is he's gonna ride with a intent to just put down some laps. And that might be a good thing, Robbie, because we have sun and shadows and wind that we didn't have yesterday starting off today. That's a good point. The wind is blowing, so as they come down through that U.S. Air Force, it's going to be a little extra sketchy. They're going to have to make sure they judge that wind just right. Yeah, Evan Romstall, there he made the front row of one round to go in the final. All right. We're about ready to go under starter's orders in front of a packed house in Duluth and around the world on Flow Racing. And here we go. First heat of Pro Light. Good launch from that number two spot on the line, but Freeland gets a nice arc under. It's going to wind up being a fight for second, though. It's Mandrick with Creighton Dillon on his tail. Braden Dillon made it some magic in that first quarter. He was about fourth. Now he's put himself all the way in second. Look at the triple down the hill. Braden oh. making things happen early. Getting some amplitude out of that downhill Polaris section. And Dillon already up into the lead. Leaving Madrick now to give chase. Madrick takes a different line as they charge down this downhill towards this big skidoo bowl turn. And you can see Madrick making up some time there. Just got a little better advantage oh. on that inside. We got a battle downs trying to work his way into that third, fourth spot. And he did that just with pure power on Jan Evan Romstahl. Went around the outside of him and said, see ya. 
And he's not done. Look at this charge up to the outside of Freeland. Downs is motoring here. Yeah, and he gets that triple that Creighton got earlier in that first lap, so. Downs making things happen. Moved himself into third. Mandrick better take some notes because he is not playing around today. So you've got the FXR skidoo with Dylan leading. You've got Mandrick also getting help from FXR there in second. And then Mandrick and the Mystic Lubricant sled rolling along there now uh, trying to battle it out here with Freeland and hang on to that third position as they charge back up to the top of the hill and hit the U.S. Air Force flyaway. It's a massive error right there. On that downhill, Creighton is on one. And see Freeland, he got her back around down, so. Yeah, those two have been playing trade him here over the last lap and a half. We're on the final lap here in this first pro light heat race. Oh, Freeland slid it up there to the top of the berm. Better be careful. You don't want to go all the way down that one and it put an end to your night for sure, or at least the heat race. Oh, Romstahl giving a little grief here to Troy Horbani. That's a battle oh. to stay in the top five, though. And the announcer's curse rears its head. Romstahl winds up sitting on his side. The field's going to come down to the checkered flag. So your pro light champ, Creighton Dillon, opens up this round with a heat win. Kenny Mandrick will come across for the two spot, followed by Freeland in third then down a little bit back in fourth four bodies gonna round out the top five and coming in behind them will be uh devin denman it looks like i believe mitchell gross or no i'm sorry oscar anglin on the green mountain racing party cat and romstall will uh, finish off the lap here as heat number two in our first round of pro like gets ready to roll Emmerich Legendre in the field, Kale Callen, Nick Lorenz, number two man in the pro light points. And he's got a halfway decent gap on Evan Christian because Evan did not make last night's pro light final. Yeah, that was a heartbreaker. Evan had his troubles there and just couldn't get it done. But today's a new day. He looked good in practice. The 33 is always one to be. Not taken serious in that first corner. He is a good starter. And I also hey. saw uh, Topi Posty there in the field. Pony and finisher, runner up to Creighton Dillon last night. Yeah, Topi was on one too. And a mash line on that black 710 Elite Motorsports Skidoo, number five man in the points. And only 11 ahead of Kenny Mandrick, and Mandrick just had a good finish in his first round qualifier, so. Pressure is on. Oh, look at that launch from Evan Christian. He ripped that, and he's gonna have the whole shot coming around the outside. He's got Topi Posty battling alongside of him, but Evan's got it coming down the hill, but Topi triples. Yeah, Topi making things happen early. Gets out front, makes that pass stick, and you can see who is that? That's oh, and Lorenz way back, so he's got some work to do. Here comes Ashline. He's come tearing up through the field here, and now he makes the move on Topi. He's going to get caught on the outside of the corner here, but Adam is an aggressive rider, knows how to hold his line there, and he gave Topi just enough room to turn and pull away. How about Ashline? He went from third to first. In a few straightaways, and he is checking out on these guys. Again, up to the top of that hill, Robbie. You were saying you're on the hammer full send for about a good six seconds, flying up to the top of that hill, and then making your way down this U.S. Air Force flyaway. And we're seeing some big air triples happening there on that takeoff. We sure are. Post to get that triple before the finish line. Forced them wide, though. Now you see Evan Christian getting the better run on Posty. Oh, and they are ski to ski there for a moment, but the Polaris out running the skidoo for the moment coming up the hill. They Ooh. head around that core RV hairpin and drop back down. Ashline making a little mistake in that corner. Allows Christian to pull right up beside him, so the race is far from over. Jeremy Bolu fourth. By the way, Nick Lorenz fifth as we watch the top three all within sight of each other. Coming back over that U.S. Air Force flyaway. Ashline got a really good flow through that section of the track. Yeah, Ashline's just being so strong. Like I've said before, he can really manipulate that sled and put it wherever he wants, but 
He's losing a little time right now. Evans got something going, and Ashland's got to figure this out. Yeah, because Evan Christian has closed to within about three or four sled lengths here. We'll see if he's picking that up on the uphill or the downhill sections of the track. He's going to rip around the outside of the skidoo berm. That's going to give him longer time full throttle here before he hits the crest of the jump. Does that make a difference? Not yet. We're coming to the checkers. Massive triple right there, but Ashley getting it done early. Evan Christian coming across second. Oh, that was close there at the line between Posty and Jeremy Bolu. And Bolu winds up fourth with Lorenz fifth and it's Shepard Callen and Legendre as we wrap up the second of our Pro Light Heat races. And it looks like we got one more on the docket here, Robbie. Anson Scheel will be in the field for this one. He is uh, currently sitting fourth in the points, five behind Evan Christian. Bailey Forrest is in there. Trent Whitwer had a good run last night. Mitchell Gross, Jordan Beast. Colton Krejcik had an off in his round one qualifier. Kind of ruined his evening last night, so he's looking for something better today. Yeah, and I see Anson is the one that's going to ring the bell here. He had some trouble in that final last night. It was a pileup like on 35. I had Interstate 35 there. He had about three riders pile drive into the back of his sled, and that was the end of his night. He had a good ride going up till then, so I have a feeling Anson wants to right the ship, and he is going to have his first opportunity right now. Now watch Whitworth. Remember what Evan Christian did from the far outside on the last start. And look at where Trent Whitworth is. Same spot. Yeah, he's banking on that. He's going to be able to carry enough speed and momentum around that top corner. A little risky, though. If somebody meets him to the top of the hill, he's going to have nowhere to go. Ah, did he get enough out of it on the outside? He's going to try to go the long way around. Shield will cut him off. That'll open a door on the inside for another one of the Arctic Cat sleds. As they charge toward the Amsoil finish line jump, it'll be Shield hanging on to the lead. They got a little close to that first corner. As I say that, it is gross. Ends up coming off the machine, so Anson stays on and he's got himself a nice little lead. So Anson brings that sharing speed sports sled around, and there is the Mitchell Gross sled sitting by itself. I'm not sure where Mitchell is unless he's cleared into the infield at this point just to get out of the way. Meanwhile, the action continues here as we head up to the top of the hill. Trent Whitworth took that gamble and it almost paid off, but he's back and forth. Let's see what happened here with Mitchell Gross. Oh, you can see he went to make the block pass. Ended up losing that battle and hopefully he's okay. Can't really see where he is there. The yellow flag out in that zone of the course, which means you've got to roll the jump, slow it down, no overtaking until you get past the incident. Then you're free to get back after it. Yeah, and Anson, I like what he's doing right there. He's able to double over that little hump. That's going to save him a lot of energy and a lot of time. Anytime you can get that machine to just kind of float into the corner and not force it, it's a lot easier on the rider. You can see Anson, he's really he's gelling right now. He's getting this triple down the hill. No big pressure at all. Double, triple, all the way through. I'm sure this is putting smiles on uh, Lou and Lindsay's faces right now to have the Amsoil the United States Air Force sled at the head of the class here in Pro Light on the final lap. As we say that, though, you can see Forrest hanging in there. That's has got to be perfect from the, this point on. Yeah, we saw enough last lap drama one round ago to know it ain't over till the checker. Yeah, ooh, I like that line too. Anson really getting creative out there. Inside, outside type lines. And, and I bet you this is going to give him a ton of confidence going into round number two to have a good second and a half and a solid ride to the checkered flag. So Anson Shield wins the final pro light heat race. Force comes across second, followed by Whitworth. Then it's going to be Dylan Rose, George Beast, Colt Krejcik, and again, Mitchell Gross had the off there in that qualifier. So those are the results here for the first round of Pro Light. And that means 
that we're ready to get the pro show on the road here as they are putting a fresh groom on the starting line with the FXR groomer. And we're going to have the Amsoil Pro Triple Crown on tap for you next. Oil Pro Racers making their way down here on their site lap, getting a look at the course. They haven't seen it since the qualifying. You're looking at the number two qualifier from earlier today. And the winner, one round to go, Jordan LaBelle on that uh, Makita Skidoo FBP and FXR sponsored 511. Yeah, Jordan was special last night. He was able to do some things that these other riders weren't able to do, and that was just commit to this downhill. He was able to find better lines continuously all night. And this guy right here, though, he is not going to mess around. I have a feeling, even though he's got to start in that back row, he's going to find a way to get in that top five around that first corner. And if he is, the leaders better look out because he is going to put down some laps, and it's going to be impressive. Now, the guy that is hoping something extraordinary happens is Francis Peltier. He's second in the points. He's trying to hold off a surging Jordan LaBelle who is only a handful of points behind him. At the same time, he has to win tonight, and Har has to finish dead last for it to even be close. Yeah, so. I do not see that happening, but you just never know how that should all shake out. And what I don't see happening is Har finishing last. I feel like Francis has the best shot as ever to win this, no doubt, but Har is gonna be in the mix early and often. And the 31, I could put money on it. He will be, he'll be battling. Now, I was talking to Juddy of uh, Juddy Motorsports, Emo Har's team earlier, and uh, talking about uh, how the pressure is kind of off now. So, you know, all Emo has to do is basically just start this race, and he locks it up, and he can just go out and have fun. So. All right, here's the Pertec track report. Air temperature a little warmer than yesterday, but the winds are a little bit stronger. Yeah, they sure are. Windshield putting it right around that freezing temp, so visibility's good, snow conditions, chunky. I would say that's pretty accurate. Yeah, chunky like the soup, there you go. All right, ra racers pulling up in the line. Francis Peltier, by the way, was the number one qualifier and the Amsoil Pro qualifying session held earlier this evening. Yeah. Gustav Salston getting ready there. Yeah, and if I'm Francis, I just want to sit and trust what I've done to get me to this point. He's been so solid. He said before that he just wasn't feeling that confident. He wasn't having the year that he was looking at. I, I think otherwise, he's having a great year. He's been riding phenomenal, and competition is stiff, and he's one of the main players in this, so. The 2 2 0 is definitely one to be reckoned with, and he's having a fabulous year. All right, if you're new to Amsoil Championship Snowcross, let's set the table here for you. It's three main events. They're timed events plus a lap. You get one point for a win, two for a second, three for a third, so on down the line. End of the three races, tally it up. Lowest point total wins. The third main event's finish is the tiebreaker one. Yeah, and that's important. You got to pay attention to that. We seen that last night a little bit. Came down to the last lap, really, what the podium was going to look like. And see Hart now. He's going to line up on the inside in the back row. Not a bad spot. You see how that first corner plays out. Typically, everybody pushes a little wide. He might be able to sneak around that inside, put himself in a great position. Yeah, I think probably his first order of business is just don't get tipped over in the first corner. After that, just let it. Let it unfold and go race. Yeah, that's pretty accurate, pretty spot on. He's gonna navigate through there nice and clean. And then the race will be on and I'll tell you what, I'm getting excited. This is gonna be a good one.
Great start off the inside for Daniel Benham, but look at the round at the outside. Somebody went down on the start straight. And that is Francis Peltier. It is. Oh, no. no. Not what we wanted to see out of him. And, oh, wow. So where is our player? Oh, we got Peterson in the tough box. All right, let's get another look here, courtesy of Air Jordan, and oh, what happened. He just got pinched. Everybody yeah. started squeezing. And Har was a uh, good thing he was back there because he had enough time to react and steer clear rather than get caught up in the middle of that. Yeah, and Har, he is in it right now. Just takes out a bunch of the tough blocks there. So, all right, Jordan, where are you sitting? LaBelle sitting second, third? And he just made the move on Jacob York, so he should cycle up to second on timing and scoring. We're just about one minute in. Daniel Benham jumping out to the lead. Benham one round to go. Mechanical issues kind of plagued him. Jacob York and Benham both feel like these Articats are good on these longer tracks. Sure are. The Articat boys have woken up. Yesterday did not go how they were looking for. Jordan's in an Articat sandwich right now, so he needs to get moving. Benham starting to stretch it out a little bit. 1.8 seconds out front. Now we saw LaBelle have to kind of fight from underneath one round to go in the second main event where he had to charge his way up and get a finish that was essentially the key to him being able to get the overall win. Stunboy whole shot for this one went to Benham. So he's feeling a lot better. The sled's running better. And right now, he better run it for all it's worth. LaBelle has chipped away about a full second of that gap. Robbie, he's coming in hot. Yeah, LaBelle got into the 39.5 second lap time. He's the fastest on the track. And there's no doubt Benham feels that pressure, so. And yeah, look at that. LaBelle is wow, there. as they triple down the hill. <laughs> as they head into the skidoo corner, then charge up the hill. And we've got plenty of time left here. Five minutes, 50 seconds, plus a lap to go. And a lead battle is brewing as Benham goes big, tripling his way off the U.S. Air Force flyway, trying to add to that gap. And he got maybe a tenth, so it's back to a one-second lead. And yeah, look at Jordan. He's getting through that downhill a little cleaner, and that's where his time is being made. Benham's going to have to find something new there. And hopefully put up a little bit bigger of a fight. I just have a feeling LaBelle is going to make this happen as this track breaks down. His lines right now, to me, look a little cleaner. And we've kind of noted throughout the course of the season, Robbie, that there probably isn't a better second half of an event racer right now than LaBelle, even though he's a rookie in this hands oil profile. Yeah, I think you're spot on with that for sure. And let's see the gap. 1.4 seconds now, so. LaBelle making a little bit of time up as they say that makes yeah. a mistake. Yeah, he kind of landed on the upside of one of those jumps from that Polaris down. Only you can see the, the snow kind of give way there and all that forward momentum you lose when that happens. So Benham continues to lead by about a second and a half now over LaBelle as we're closing in on the halfway point of this first Amsoil Pro Triple Crown main. Jake Yurt rolling along there in the three spot followed by Oscar Norm. And then Marcus Ogemar, uh, Emil Harn just sitting back there in the number eight spot right now. And the belt is inching up. 1.4, gap stays the same, but just seems like he's making up a little time here and there. And it's my eyes playing tricks with me and Benham has the answer. Well, Daniel Benham, he's a veteran racer and probably would like to be able to manage a little bit of a bigger gap, but can you manage a one-second gap on track in real time, Robbie? Yeah, you for sure can. You get into these corners. Anytime you're doing that hairpin up there, you definitely can take a little glance over and, and see where your competition's at. Let's go down for this mid-race update to our Erica Ulrich. Thanks, Paul. You were talking a little bit about Emil Har just sitting in eighth earlier, and I caught up with him in the trailer after a not-so-ideal qualifying as he sat 11, and he said, honestly, he's not too concerned. He's just going to simply let this race come to him, pick off riders where he sees the opportunity, and not make any mistakes and try and enjoy it all. And that's what him and Cody Cam were talking about. Unfortunately, Cody not out there tonight due to a knee injury, but kind of coaching each other and uh, keeping each other mentally in check. So Emo Hard riding along here and making some moves here. Uh, Adam Peterson is back there after getting caught up in a little bit of the opening lap fracas that happened. But yeah, that is oh, as you say that Peterson 
is not afraid to bump skis a little bit there. And yeah. Runs into the... That, that was an, almost a nose into the seat. You kind of felt that in your hips when you did that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Adam's been known to do that a time or two this season long. I think every rider out there will say the same thing. He is a hard competitor and he's not going to give you an inch. Closing in on about 240 plus a lap to go here in this first Anzoil Pro Triple Crown Race. Daniel Benham on the Woody's Racing Arctic Cat, sponsored by Idaho and Potatoes, among others. Working his way back down to the Anzoil finish line jump, and that gap is growing as it's now up to about two seconds. Yeah, and Dan Benham just put in such a solid race. He had a lot of tough luck yesterday. Didn't get to show what he was made of. A couple mechanicals, no doubt. That is been the story this weekend a lot of these guys have had mechanicals including our points leader Benham starting to work his way around riders here at the back of the field trying to put them one lap down as we close in on a minute 45 plus a lap to go and it looks like first one he's going to encounter here is Marcus Ogamar. Ogamar will go to the outside of the FXR turn gives Benham plenty of time to clear him on the inside Daniel Benham, that is the smoothest and the most flowing I have seen this Arctic Cat run this season. They have really got to tune up on this thing. Yeah, and you heard Jake Yerk talk about suspension, and they were off yesterday, and it showed both of these riders just didn't have the speed to run, and what a difference one night makes. Right here, Dan Benham stretching his lead, 2.6 seconds, and it's not like he's uh, pulling away from some nobody. It's Jordan LaBelle. He won and dominated last night, so... So Benham closing uh, in on a minute to go. So he'll make his way around. Lap times run anywhere from 41 to 42 seconds in race mode. So. And you see that gap right there. 3.5 seconds now. Benham put almost a full second on the bell. He timed the track together a lot better than I thought for sure. Looked like earlier LaBelle had the momentum and then Benham just shut that down. And Har is on the verge of cracking the top five as he is uh, closed up on the back of Hunter Patnode. Patnode looking for a top five finish here, and uh, he has Oscar Norm ahead of him as Daniel Benham just going through the motions here through the FXR turn. The clock will run out while he's on this lap, so when he comes to the Enzoil finish line jump, he'll see the white flag. And you see Benham take a look over his shoulder, just a little gauge, see where things are at. How's the the race playing out. The bell's not too far out, but definitely would have to have a mistake from Benham before he can even be close to put a, uh, a pass on. Yeah, for Daniel Benham, he's just hoping none of those mechanical gremlins that played him one round ago rear their ugly head again as he touches down off the U.S. Air Force flyaway, and he'll see that white flag here at the Anzoil finish line jump. Benham who swept in Salamanca when he won his Anzoil Pro Triple Crown this year, looks to start this Anzoil Pro Triple Crown on a winning note. Well, Dan Benham showed up in New York, pretty much kicked everyone in, in the butt pretty square, and he's starting, to, starting his day off exactly where that was. And love what I see out of him right now. You see LaBelle, he closed a little bit that lap. It's going to be too late, but he could go back to the trailer, put his head up and say, yeah, I was there. I was catching him. And here comes Daniel Benham to the Amsoil finish line jump, getting the win here in the first leg of tonight's Amsoil Pro Triple Crown. Jordan LaBelle will come away with the number two spot, and Jacob Yerk will finish it off in third. And now coming around here to the Amsoil finish line jump, this should Put a lock on it for Emil Haar. So Haar unofficially becomes the 2024 Amsoil Pro Champion. Yeah, you can see he knows it. The pressure is off now. Hopefully he can ride free. And someone who rode free right there, the 2-2-1 of Dan Benham. He had that one from start to finish. 
Everyone is headed back up the uh, return road here. Right in front of the packed house here. This is great interaction where the fans get to reach out high five our Amsoil Pro Racers on the way by here. And Daniel Benham is now standing by with our Erica Allred. We'll let the slits clear through here so that they can hear their conversation. Here comes Travis Kern. Right. Rode that race with a little bit of a banged up thumb, by the way. Erica, down to you with our first Triple Crown race winner. Dan, righting the wrongs after you had a little bit of misfortune in our previous round. So how did you mentally reset after that one and come out swinging here today? I just had to forget about it. And unfortunately, it, that's kind of been the case through multiple rounds this season. Um, so I hate to say that I'm kind of used to it, but I've kind of gotten numb to it. And it's just every day is a new day. Uh, it was nice to get a start. Oh uh, man, that felt, that felt so good. So I hope to keep it going. The track's gonna get rougher as the night goes on. More lines are gonna develop. So it should be a good night of racing. Making a statement here early on. Best of luck in round two. All right, thanks Erica. So we'll take those finishes and that's gonna determine who gets the first pick on the line for the second leg of the Anzoil Pro Triple Crown. That's coming up a little bit later on this evening here. This is the Amsoil Snowcross National, presented by Hayes Brake. The Pro-Am women will be up when we come back on Flow Racing. Rocks. Sand. Heat. Life off-road is tough. We wouldn't have it any other way. If AMSOIL products are designed for this kind of punishment, think about what they can do for your daily driver. Upgrade to AMSOIL protection today and get fast free shipping. Anderson's Pure Maple Syrup, a perfect start to a perfect day. Not only is it great on pancakes, 